There are lots of nice proofs that the harmonic series diverges, but I recently saw one which might be my current favorite. And it comes from a paper from the College Math Journal in 2012, if you guys would like to check it out. Okay, so let's start by recalling what I mean by the harmonic series. So that's the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n. So we'll start by writing out a couple of terms. And we're probably going to write out more terms than it seems like we really need. But that's just going to give us enough examples of terms of the harmonic series on the board so that we can see what's going on with, you know, the maybe seeds of our argument. Okay, so there I've got it written from 1 all the way up to 1 over 13. And now we're going to do some grouping here, but we're going to do grouping in maybe a way that is not typical. So uh, one way to do grouping is by powers of 2, but instead of doing grouping by powers of 2, we're going to do grouping by Fibonacci blocks. So let's start by grouping a half with itself and a third with itself. So notice that this is a block of length one. In other words, there are f sub one total terms here. And I guess before we get ahead of ourselves, let's recall the Fibonacci sequence over here. And of course, that's defined by these two seeds, f sub one and f sub two is equal to one. And then after that, we have fn plus two equal to fn plus fn plus one. Okay, so if we've got a single term, well, that's going to be f sub 1 terms. And here, this is going to be f sub 2 total terms. That's because f1 and f2, like I said before, are both equal to 1. But now, let's group these two together and notice that this is a block which has f sub 3 total terms. And that's because we can carry this out to see that f sub 3 is equal to f sub 1 plus f sub 2, which is equal to 1 plus 1, which is 2. And then while we're at it, let's notice that f sub 4 is f sub 3 plus f sub 2, which is going to be 2 plus 1 or 3. And likewise, f sub 5 is equal to 5, f sub 6 is equal to 8, and f sub 7 is equal to 13. Okay, nice. So, well, since we're doing this in Fibonacci blocks and we've done a block of f1, f2, and f3, well, our next block will be of length f4. So that needs to have three numbers. So let's group all of these together into a block of f4 total terms. And then our next Fibonacci block is going to need to have five numbers, but that's going to go from 1 9th to 1 15th, and this is going to have f sub 5 total terms. And now, well, let's see what we can do with this. Notice that all of the terms in this block that has length f sub 3 are bigger than 1 5th. Oh, but 1 5th? That's exactly the reciprocal of f5. So let's observe that each of these are bigger than or equal to 1 over f sub 5. So we have f sub 3 total terms, and they're all bigger than or equal to the reciprocal of f5. And then likewise for this next bit, notice that f6 is equal to 8. And all of our terms here are bigger than or equal to 1 over 8. So here we have a block of f4 terms that are all bigger than or equal to 1 over f6. And then just moving down here, we've got a block of 1 over f5 terms that are all bigger than or equal to 1 over f7. Notice here we have 1 over 13, f7 is 13. And then I guess these first two well, it's not really just bigger than or equal to, it's exactly equal to. So notice here we've got a term which is exactly equal to 1 over f3. And here we have a term which is exactly equal to 1 over f4. Okay, nice. 
but that means our whole series is going to be bigger than or equal to the series that we form by making the replacement with these numbers right here for each of the terms in those blocks. So let's do that. So this is going to be bigger than or equal to 1 plus, and now I'm going to write this as f1 over f3. So that's that first block. And then let's have the same thing for the second block, but that'll be f2 over f4. That's our 1 third. And then let's see, for our third block, what do we have? Where we're going to have f3 terms, all of them are bigger than or equal to 1 over f5. So that's going to give us f3 over f5. And then just continuing down the line, now we're going to have f4 over f6, and then f5 over f7, and that just continues on and on and on. But I think you can probably see the structure that's forming here. Notice in the numerator, we have a Fibonacci number, and in the denominator, we have the, not the next Fibonacci number, but the one after that. So this is like f sub 1, f sub 1 plus 2, f sub 2, f sub 2 plus 2, f sub 3, f sub 3 plus 2, and so on and so forth. So this series that we have written on this line is exactly equal to 1 plus the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of f sub n over f sub n plus 2. But now what we'll need to do is show that this series, this maybe companion series diverges, but our harmonic series is bigger than or equal to this companion series. So if this diverges, so does our harmonic series. So there's a quick way out of this where you look at the well-known limit of consecutive Fibonacci numbers, but that's not exactly what we're gonna use here because I wanna keep this very self-contained. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. So we just finished showing that our harmonic series was bigger than this series which starts with one and then we have this sum of, well, these quotients or ratios of Fibonacci numbers. And now we wanna show that this companion series diverges. And we'll do that via the following claim. And this is not a very tight inequality, but it will get the job done. So we'll prove that for all n bigger than or equal to 1, fn plus 2 is less than 5 times fn. And here we're going to do it with induction, and as you'll see, we'll need two base cases. So let's look at our first base case, which is like f sub 3 versus f sub 1. So observe that f sub 3 is equal to 2, but 2 is most definitely less than 5 which is equal to 5 times 1, which is equal to 5f1. Okay, so that's the first of our two base cases. And then let's see the second one, which will compare f2 and f4. So let's start with f sub 4, but by our little calculation over here, that's equal to 3. But now 3 is also less than 5. Okay, but then let's see, 5 is equal to 5 times f2, because f2 is also equal to 1. So there we have it. Those are our two base cases. And now let's do our induction step. Well, really, we're making kind of a semi-strong induction hypothesis. We'll assume two cases are true, which is totally okay here, because we've got two base cases to build off. So let's suppose for sum k bigger than or equal to 2, we have the following two statements are true. So we have fk plus 1 is less than 5 times fk minus 1. And then we have fk plus 2 is less than 5 times fk. So we at least have one occurrence of this situation. And that's this occurrence up here in the base case, and that's really all we need in order to get this thing started. But now, what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to simply add these two inequalities. But notice that's going to give us fk plus 1 plus fk plus 2, but that'll be fk plus 3. 
And then we'll have five fk minus one plus fk, but that's going to be fk plus one. But then maybe if you wanted another inequality as well, you would simply add this one with this one and you would produce the next. And then as you can see, this allows us to produce all such inequalities. Okay, so anyway, we've got this claim proved, but now what can we do with it? Well, let's take this and forge it into something that looks like what we have in our inequality, which is this quotient of Fn by Fn plus two. So let's divide some things over and let's observe that we have one fifth is less than Fn over Fn plus two. Okay, but that means we can push our inequality even further and see that this is bigger than one plus, the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one fifth. But that's clearly an infinite sum as we're adding a non-zero number to itself infinitely many times. But now just to really finish this whole thing off, observe that what we have over here is our harmonic series diverging infinitely as needed. And that's a good place to stop.